Hello Healthinistas and welcome to my channel 50 something. This channel is for the overall well-being of people 50 and older. But don't worry, if you're in your teens, 20s, 30s and 40s, you can still apply a lot of the content. Today I'm talking about and making cauliflower pizza crust. I was so excited a couple of days ago when I found out that Trader Joe's had come out with cauliflower and cornmeal pizza crust and it was flying off the shelves. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go get one because everybody talks about how hard it is to make that crust. So I called Trader Joe's before I got there. I didn't want to go and then not have any on the shelf. So I called them and they told me that they've temporarily put a hold on it because of something minor. Um, so they're not going to be ordering any. Well, so I decided to go to Plan B. So I started researching to find the best way to make cauliflower pizza crust that will not fall apart. So today, that's what I'm doing. I believe I found the recipe. So we're gonna go through it and make it and you be the judge. First you want to use either your food processor or grating, however way you want to get the cauliflower chopped up finely. And then you need three cups of cauliflower. You also need a cup and a half of finely grated Parmesan cheese. It has to be fre fresh and you need two eggs. That's all you need. The first thing you want to do is put your cauliflower in a frying pan with no grease, nothing. Just heat it up because you want to get the moisture out until it's dry. All right, so you want to put your cauliflower on about medium heat and then just keep stirring because you don't want it to get too brown. You just want to make sure that you get all the moisture out of it. So you'll do this for some time till all the moisture is out and you'll let it sit for a while. Okay, after you've stirred it till they've gotten a lot of the water out, you can tell by, you know, just by looking at it and how it feels that you've gotten the water out. Don't, don't let it get brown. Now you want to take it off the stove, off the fire, and make sure it cools. Okay, so after the cauliflower has cooled, you want to go ahead and add your Parmesan cheese and then add your two eggs and you want to knead it together. Mix it well. Make sure you mix it well. And then now what you're going to do is that you're going to start to form it into a round pizza crust. And the key to this, you're going to start with the ball and then we're going to put it, make sure you have parchment paper because you don't want this to stick and that will help you easily take it out of the pan when it's, when it's baked. So start with the ball and we have the Parmesan cheese and the egg so that it keeps the cauliflower together. And Parmesan is better than mozzarella when it comes to using it to hold this together. So start with the ball and then you're going to form it on your parchment paper. Now, you want to make sure that you have you get this flattened, but you don't want it too thin because if it's too thin, it's going to burn. It's going to look burnt on the sides when it comes out of the oven. So you want to make sure that you pat it down to about a thickness of maybe quarter inch or three sixteenths. Now I don't expect you to go ahead and measure it. I'm just saying that you don't want it to be too thin around the edges because if it is too thin, then it's going to burn. So it's shaping up pretty good and you want to make sure that the center is also the same thickness because you don't want that to be too, um, you don't want that to be too, um, too thick and then it doesn't cook all the way. Okay, 
I think it's ready to put in the oven. We've been heating the oven to 400 degrees. Okay, now that it's all done, we're going to put it in the oven, like I said, at 400 degrees in about 15 to 20 minutes, but we'll keep an eye on it because we don't want it to be too brown or too burnt because we, all, we still have to put our toppings and our cheese and then cook the pizza again. So we're gonna put the crust in and then we'll come back in a few minutes and see how it looks. So after about 17 minutes is what it took. And the reason why I want to use parchment paper because it's so easy to get out. Now, once I've taken off the parchment paper, look at how nice and golden it is. And look on the bottom. And you notice it's not falling apart. It is just perfect. So now we're ready to put our topping on it and put our cheese and we're ready for our pizza. So let's put our toppings on it. And everybody, the three of us that are eating this pizza, and um, that's Tiff. She only wants tomatoes, mushrooms. Do you want spinach? No. Oh, she doesn't have much taste. I have heck of So tomatoes, mushrooms, and just a little bit of green pepper, she said. I want spinach, tomatoes, mushrooms, red onions, the green peppers and jalapenos on mine. And of course we all want cheese. And then my husband probably wants spinach, tomatoes, mushrooms. He wants everything and cheese. So let's go ahead and put that on and then we'll put it back in the oven for a, a little bit under 10 minutes. Okay, now we're ready to put it in the oven for under 10 minutes to get the cheese to melt and then we'll be ready to eat it. Mmm. Delicious. Health and Nuisance, remember, doing something is better than nothing. This is so good. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm.